In the previous video, we discussed the matrix vector product and the corresponding formulation of linear subspaces, uh, of linear equations. Um, and we introduced the notions of linear dependence and linear independence. In this video, we'll, con um, we'll see many equivalent conditions to the linear independence of the rows of columns of a matrix. Um, and we'll study linear transformations and the matrices which represent those linear transformations. A quick recap from last class. So the, we have a matrix with R rows and C columns, and we can, we can multiply it by the vector with C components. Um, it's equal to a, is equal to the vector with R components given by this formula. Uh, and you can visualize this by uh, sort of putting the vector with C components on its side um, and then sort of uh, multiply the corresponding entries one by another and then adding them together. So thereby, thereby we define the functions <clears throat> uh, from RC to RR, which takes vector X to vector AX. So there's a question, when does the equation AX equals B have solutions for any vector B? In terms of the row reduced matrix, uh, when every row of A has a pivot, uh, as we saw in the previous video, equation AX equals B has a solution exactly when the augmented matrix um, this of this form has no pivots in the last column. If there is already a pivot in every row of A, uh, there, can be, there can be a pivot in the final column. So in terms of the rows, when the rows are linearly uh, independent, that means then the, uh, the solution, the, when the rows are linearly independent, um, then the equation AX equals B have solutions for any B. Now recall that it means that uh, no non-zero linear combination of these rows of A is equal to zero, uh, the linear independence. Indeed, uh, if there were such an expression, then by row operations, a row of the form 0, 0, 0, and 1 in the end can be created and augmented made, uh, in the augmented matrix for the uh, choice of, uh, of the right-hand side vector B. And now in terms of columns, when the columns of matrix A spam the entire space, so, I mean, the answer to the question, when does AX equals to B have the solution for any B? Uh, it's when the columns of A span the entire space. So recall that solving equation AX equals B means that B can be expressed as a linear combination of the columns of A. Uh, another way, when does the AX equals B have solutions for any B? in terms of the associated function is when the function determined by the matrix A is on two, right? So it hits every point in the image in RR. Indeed, so uh, solving the equation AX equals to B means finding a point which maps to B. And if every point is hit by this map, so every point, every vector in that space is hit by this map, then this can always be done. Let's ask again, when does AX equals B have solutions for any vector B? Answer, if A has R rows and C columns and the following are equivalent. AX equals to B has solutions for any B. The matrix A has a pivot in every row. The rows of A are linearly independent. So just think of rows as vectors and they're linearly independent. Um, and the columns of A span the entire image space RR. So look at those conditions and think about them again. So uh, these four equations, these four statements are equivalent. So the A, A, A X equals B has solution for every B uh, if either of those uh, is satisfied and that they are equivalent to each other. And finally, there's one more, the function corresponding to A 
uh, hits uh, all points of our R, which means that it's uh, the map is onto. Uh, let's talk about zero solution first. So uh, homogeneous equation always have a zero solution. Indeed, so uh, no matter what the matrix is, if you multiply it by the zero factor, uh, it's going to be zero. So it, this equation is solved by x equals to zero. But obviously, inhomogeneous equations do not, right? They do not have zero solutions because left hand side will be zero and right hand side is not. Um, and inhomogeneous equa equation need have no solutions at all. Now, when does uh, the homogeneous equation ax equals zero have only the zero solution? Now, this can be answered in terms of the row reduced matrix. When every column of A has a pivot. Uh, make sure it's it's different from what we had before. Right? So here, uh, the in other words, yeah. So the only solution for the system x equals to zero is the zero solution if every column in matrix A has a pivot. Uh, as we seen last time, the this means that we get to introduce zero uh, free parameters. So there are no free parameters, which means that. Uh, uh, but you can solve the system of equations uh, uniquely, and because the right hand side is equal to zero, then um, all those coefficients x1 to xr should be, should be equal to zero. There is at most one solution, and it's trivial, and, and, and it's a zero solution. Okay. Now the same question can be answered in terms of columns when the columns are linearly independent. So a solution of ax equals to zero is a way of writing zero, the right hand side, as a linear combination of the columns of A. And that's precisely the uh, statement of linear independence of uh, vectors um, which uh, compose, which, which compose, comprise the matrix A. All right, so every column of matrix A is a vector and then this uh, this claim here is equivalent to saying that these vectors are linearly independent and the components of vector x are those are other coefficients. Mm -hmm. So if this equation has only zero solution, that means that on, the only way of uh, doing this is to have all the coefficients to be zero, which is the definition of uh, linear uh, independence of the columns. Now, in terms of the rows, we can try to answer the same question. When does AX equals to zero have only the zero solution in terms of rows is when the rows span. Um, so by now, you should, you should have collected enough intuition to understand this by yourself. So why, why is this the case? So the we only have zero solution of the homogeneous equation if rows, they, uh, they span the entire space. Uh, think about pivots. Now, in terms of the uh, associated function, uh, this question can be addressed as uh, sort of the function must be one-to-one, -one, meaning that no two distinct points uh, in RC in the image are mapped to the same point uh, in RR. So for every point in RC, there is one point in RR. So indeed, if two points x and y are sent to the same point, if this is not satisfied, so ax is equal to a y, then we can use the linearity. You can rewrite write a to equal zero is the only solution. Then x minus y is equal to zero, which means that these vectors are the same. That's a quick proof. So the only way the two points can be sent to the same point if uh, they were made uh, the same uh, to begin, they were the same to begin with. Now, if A has R rows and C columns, uh, the following statements are equivalent. AX equals zero has only the zero solution. Two, the matrix A has a pivot in every column. Three, the columns of A are linearly independent. 
for the rows of A span all of RC. Five, the function corresponding to A carries distinct point into the distinct points. So this map is one to one. Now let's uh, summarize. So A has R rows and C columns. So AX is equal to zero implies AX equals to zero, which means there's a pivot in every column. Columns are linearly independent. Rows span all of RC and distinct points are mapped, are uh, sent to distinct points. Um, now, on the, on, on the other hand, the inhomogeneous equation, AX equals B has solutions for any B. If we have pivots in every row, if rows are linearly independent, and if columns span all of RR, the uh, image space, and that the map, uh, the function A, the linear function A is onto. So it hits all the points of RR. So you can see here, there is a uh, sort of complementarity principle here, right? So the here we have column, here we have row, here we have column, here we have row, here we have rows, here we have columns. Uh, so the conditions look similar, only the uh, rows are replaced with columns and vice versa uh, in some of the cases. And then here the um, the one-to-one, the a condition or it's also called embedding condition is replaced with onto conditions. Uh, but otherwise those they look very similar. Now, interesting things happen when A is a square matrix. So in other words, when uh, the number of rows is equal to the number of columns. Um, so there's a pivot in every row if and only if there's a pivot in every column simply because they're equal number. Um, so these above statements are all equivalent. And so um, it literally makes no difference to look at the matrix column-wise or uh, column-wise or row-wise, right? Uh, because it's square, because it's a square matrix, all of those conditions eventually uh, become equivalent. Let's talk about span and linear independence. A collection of vectors, V1 through Vk inside n dimensional inside Rn spans if every vector in Rn can be written as a linear combination of vectors of V1 through Vk. Now, a collection of vectors V1 through Vk inside Rn is linearly uh, independent if whenever this combination is equal to, this linear combination is equal to zero, then all coefficients AIs are zero. Right? So in other words, as we explained in the previous video, if only a trivial linear combination uh, can be made zero. Or there is no non-trivial linear combination which is equal of these factors, which is equal to zero. Um, a collection consisting of a single vector is linearly independent. So uh, so long as long as this vector is not zero. And the two vectors are linearly independent as long as one isn't a multiple of another. Um, let's look at a, a special a cases of linear transformations. Some of them are very important and used quite often in, uh, well, in physics, engineering, and other applications. First, a shear transformation. So uh, here's an example of shear uh, transformation in earth crust, right? So you know that the, um, you know, earth crust sort of floats under the sea of mantles and then the mantle is, you know, is, is liquid, is fluid, and then the earth crust, they move, right? And then, for example, when we have uh, here, you know, in, in California, you have Pacific Ocean plate meeting the uh, continental plate and then they, uh, the there is some a lot of shear motion here. So like the the crust on top, the continental crust moves so in this direction, and then the oceanic crust it dives under the uh, under the, uh, the 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 continental crust, and then uh, basically the the um, the further you go, the longer is the is, is the shift. So it's called shear transformation. Another transformation is reflection. So here's a beautiful image of a swan in the lake. And so 
reflection has always a line of reflection. Uh, so it's a um, it's a symmetry. It's a mirror symmetry. Another name for it is a mirror symmetry. So it's the, you have an image, and then um, you the map the, the, this transformation provides a mirror reflection um, over here. Uh, so this is called horizontal reflection because the so the mirror is vertical and the flip is done horizontally. And this is the vertical reflection because the, the mirror is horizontal. Uh, rotation. The picture tells for itself what rotation is. It rotates. Uh, so our goal is to understand those transformations using matrices. As we discussed before, linear transformations, they take lines to lines. Um, now, in this part, we'll only look, also look at transformations that preserve the origin of the coordinate system. Um, now, these two properties could characterize linear transformations. Uh, well, we discussed what the line is before, right? Uh, but we'll prefer the following algebraic definition. So a linear transformation is a function t from rc to rr such that t of a, v plus b, w, and so a, a and b are scalars and v and w are vectors is equal to a times t of v plus b times t of w. So a quick reminder about functions. So given two sets, x and y, a function f from x to y uh, gives an element f of x of y for every element uh, little x of x. Um, so we say that the domain of the function is x and the codomain is y. The range is the subset of y consisting of elements of the form f of x for some x in x. So in other words, these are all, uh, is the subset of all elements that come from x, right? Uh, subset of all images of x. Now, the function is said to be one-to-one -one if no two elements of x map to the same element of y, and is said to be onto if every element of y is hit, uh, for example, uh, uh, i.e. the range is range and codomains are equal. Right? So every, every point in, in y uh, has a pre-image in x, right? So there's x in, in big, small x and big x such that y is equal to, uh, to f of x. Okay, so now uh, let's revise the, uh, the table that we got before. So let A has a linear map, be a linear map whose matrix has R rows and C columns. So it's a map from RC to RR. Now, um, the, uh, the in this table below the these are equivalent conditions except the last one right so we, we just talked about them um, so here there's a, the the uh, there's a certain inequality on the uh, number of columns and number of rows uh, which we'll discuss later so this can only happen when number of columns is not greater than number of rows and this can happen when it's the opposite happens. So when the number of rows is not greater than the number of columns. And if they're equal to, then we have this uh, uh, special situation. So when we have a square matrix with number of rows, number the P within every column. So uh, all this uh, 10 conditions are equivalent. Example of a nonlinear function. Um, so take uh, uh, T, uh, take uh, the room where you are, so say uh, in your home office or you know, in your dorm, uh, and then uh, map every point in your room to the, uh, to the so it's map from your room to R, to set of real numbers, which associates each point in space of your room to the temperature at that point, right? So I hope you had you know, some physical classes to understand how temperature is defined. 
right? And it, it's not, you know, it can be different, right? So, you know, if you have a, a lamp, you know, it, it produces some infrared radiation. So air around the lamp is uh, warmer than that, say, uh, on the floor where, you know, there's a flow of air from the other room. So we can define this function. And so the, the domain is this room. Uh, Codomain is R. And the range is some subset of the interval, right? So say from 60 Fahrenheit to 110 Fahrenheit. Well, I hope you cannot get, uh, I hope your room is not colder than 60 and not hotter than 110. Otherwise, it will be very hard to work in your room. So, um, so clearly it's not onto or one-to-one, -one, right? Because two different points in the room can have the same temperature and the core domain is just a small interval from 60 Fahrenheit to 110 Fahrenheit, whereas you know, the line is infinite, right? It's only, uh, it's only part, of the, uh, part of the real line. Um, and yeah, it's also nonlinear. Right, so it's the, again the definition of linear transformations, which we saw before. Um, so here, RC is the domain and RR is the codomain. Uh, and the range, and in particular, if the function if is onto, uh, and whether the function is one to one, it depends on the details of T, which, uh, which we can study. Uh, take an example the three by two matrix, one, 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 two, two, three, four. It determines a linear transformation by the formula uh, like this. It takes vector x, y to vector x plus 2y, x plus 3y, x plus 4y. So the domain is R2 and codomain is R3. And its range is a span of these two vectors, right? So vectors in the matrix of the linear transformation, they provide the, uh, and then sort of the, the range will be the span of these two vectors. So later we'll talk about basis. Uh, so we'll get, we'll get some more details on that. The columns, columns of the matrix are linearly independent. So clearly because the second vector is not a multiple of the first one. Um, so the linear transformation is one-to-one, -one. right? Uh, the columns don't span. Uh, so it's also, uh, it's also onto. Right, they don't spend because it's a three-dimensional, it, it's R3 because it's a three-dimensional space. So example, uh, the zero function uh, t of x equals to zero for all x is linear. So it's just a function that sends everything to zero, uh, all vector to zero. And you can check uh, below that the property, the linear property is satisfied, right? So t of av plus bw is equal to zero, so it's equal to, uh, so everything is equal to zero and it's equal to a t of e plus b t of w. Another example, uh, if a is a matrix with r rows and c columns, then we saw the last time that the, this is this equation, is, this uh, function is linear, r c to r r. And one example say is a quadratic function, right? It's not linear. So the, uh, takes x squared, take one and one. So f of one plus one is equal to, uh, excuse me, uh, is equal to one plus one squared, right? And is equal to four. And we see that the function is nonlinear. So one plus one squared is equal to four, which is not equal to one squared plus one squared. Let's uh, do some exercises. Is this a linear transformation? F of x equals to zero. Yes, we saw that before. F of x is equal to two. So it's a function that sends all elements into elements to two. Well, clearly no, right? Because uh, you take, take a sum, it sends the sum into four, right? As opposed to being here. So, um, then this one. Uh, yes, and you can write the matrix of linear transformation of that. And then f of x, y equals product x and y. That's a negative. 
uh, f of x, y, z is equal to the sum of x, y, and z. This is positive. Let's talk about rotation. So um, it's the sum of two vectors. Uh, you can use either the triangular rule or the parallelogram rule. This is how it's been rotated. So because the sum of these two rotated vectors is the rotation of the sum, then uh, clearly the rotation of the sum is the sum of the rotations. So it preserves the rotation preserves the rule of eigenvectors. So it's a linear transformation. Reflection. That's let's take two vectors, take their sum, and that's the reflection here. So relative to the mirror, which goes vertically. So clearly, it's also a linear transformation, right? So it's uh, uh, the sum of the rotated vectors is the rotation of the sum of the vectors. Uh, reflection, excuse me. Uh, reflection of a plus b is equal to reflect of a plus reflect of b. And it preserves the rule of eigenvectors. Let's talk about shear. That's the, again, takes the sum of two vectors. And then shear would stretch them uh, in this horizontal direction like this. And again, you can see that the, it preserves the sum, right? Because it sort of uh, the as you can see from the picture, the uh, both vectors in their sum before and after applying the transformation, uh, they stay the same. I mean, they uh, the the, the uh, shear of the sum of the vectors is equal to sum of shears of vectors a and b. Scaling, rescaling, same thing. Right, you scale everything by the same factor, multiply it by a scalar, and it acts linearly uh, on the sum of the vectors. Geometrically scaling preserves, preserves the rule for adding vectors. Now let's talk about the matrix realization. So consider the rotation of the plane by angle theta. Right, so this uh, it's a picture from high school, right, which you know very well from trigonometry. So say this, we have sines and cosines uh, on the union circle, right? Uh, so this transformation would take a point one zero to point with coordinates cosine theta, sine theta, and point zero one to point to point uh, negative sine theta, cosine theta. Exactly. That if it rotates like this. Uh, and as you can see, this is done by the, by the help of this matrix with components cosine theta, negative sine theta, sine theta, cosine theta. So are these the same linear transformation? Um, so cl let's classify those linear transformations. So the um, first describe all linear transformations from R to R. Say T is a linear transformation from R to R. So suppose it's a linear transformation, then uh, T of one has some value T in R. If you want to, to know that T of C for any, if you want to, to find what is T of C for any value of C, then you can write, uh, T of C is equal to T of C times one, and then it's equal to C times T of one because it's a linear transformation uh, is equal to C times T. So uh, it scales the image uh, by the same factor. Uh, moreover, the function determined by T of C is equal to CT is linear since uh, C of TV plus DW is equal to CV plus DW uh, times T is equal to CVT plus DWT. And it's the same as C or times VT plus uh, DWT. Or C T of V plus DT of W. Uh, therefore, the linear functions from R to R are exactly those functions of the form C T of C is equal to C, C times T for some uh, T in R. 
So all linear functions from C to from R to R, they look exactly like that. So remember, it also required that they preserve the origin. So this ends zero to zero. Okay. Now let's talk about linear transformations from R to Rn. Suppose T is such a linear transformation. Then T of one has some value vector T, both T and Rn. It's a vector with N components. Um, so if you want to know that what T of C is for any other C, then you can write we can write it the same way. So T of C is equal to T of C times one is equal to C times T of one, which is C of T. Um, and then we can check the linearity, right? So by, by, the, by the definition, so take two vectors and C T of C V plus DW is equal to all this, right? Because it's a multiplication, right? Um, and then it's equal to CV times T plus DWT, et cetera. It's equal to C times T of V plus D of uh, C times T of V plus D times T of W. That's the linear functions from R to Rn, exactly those, which behaves exactly like that, right? So it takes vector T and multiply it by, uh, uh, by, by, by the C. So T of C is equal to C times T for some vector vector t in Rn. Uh, and now let's take a more generic general linear transformation from Rm to Rn. So we can do, cannot do this thing anymore since there is no longer true for every vector in Rm. So it's a scalar multiple given by some vector. Um, but every vector is a linear combination of vectors Ei. So those uh, vectors with coordinates 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, and so on, right? So we can present every vector in Rm like this. So it's a linear combination of those vectors Ei. So later we call them basis vectors. Uh, and then we apply the linear transformation. So T of this vector is equal to linear combination of those actions. Right, so it's v1 t of e1 plus and so on plus vm t of em, and then we can uh, package this in the matrix. Right, so we can write this as matrix of uh, uh, actions of m. It's a matrix whose columns are, are t of e1, t of e2, etc., t of em. So we apply the transformation t to those vectors, and we uh, multiply this matrix by the components by the component vector v1 through vm. Um, that's the uh, linear transformation t from rm to rn uh, is, is associated by this matrix whose columns are the t of eis. So this is the way to describe the linear transformation of a matrix t. Let's do the example. The matrix of the linear transformation f of x, y is equal to 3x plus 5y, 2x plus 4y, x plus 2y. Um, so we need to evaluate f of e1 and f of e2 and stick them uh, into, the, uh, into the matrix as columns. And so we just plug in f of 1, 0. Just look at the formula. It gives 3, 2, 1. And f of 0, 1 is equal to 5, 4, 2. So we get the matrix. This is the matrix of the linear transformation. 3 to 1, 5, 4, 2. Acting on x is equal to this. So see, it's, it's very simple. Let's do the rotation. And so uh, we saw that it takes vector 1, 0 to cosine theta, sine theta, vector 0, 1 to negative sine theta, cosine theta. So therefore, the matrix of linear transformation is this cosine theta, negative sine theta, sine theta, cosine theta. Uh, feel free to exercise with these examples. Uh, the, so first find the, uh, so you can see that this matrix uh, performs the reflection in the uh, x-axis in two dimensions. So it's one, zero, zero, minus one. Uh, and finally, let's talk about composition of linear maps. 
So if the linear transformation S maps R, R A to R B and transformation T maps R B to R C, then so is the composition. So composition is also linear, uh, which maps R A to R C. So we can check it using the definitions, right? So uh, the composition applied to a linear combination of two vectors gives you T of S of C V plus W. So it's T of C of S of V plus D S of W. And then uh, using linearity again for T, we get this expression. Uh, and this is just the definition of the composition. So composition T S applied to this is equal to C composition applied to V plus D composition applied to W. Okay, now I can ask, what's the relationship between these matrices? So if S and T are given by some matrices of their linear transformations, which matrix uh, provides the transformation uh, for the composition? And we'll talk about this uh, in the next video.